Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Shima the Eliminator Stories. You guys might be wondering, where the heck are you, Trace? Like, that's not your normal background. That's not what you normally look like. Well, let me tell you, I'm on the road at the moment. We are traveling up uh, up to Harvey Bay uh, in the Fraser Coast of Australia. So currently, my husband and I are on the road, and today we are streaming live from our motel room in Harvey Bay. So welcome. Uh, today on the show, I have the amazing Lucia. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, and the great thing that I like about this particular series that we're doing is the opportunity that I get to connect with women from all walks of life, from all over the world, which I am absolutely loving. So just behind the scenes, Lucia and I have never met before. We had a little bit of a chat. She was telling me who she is and where she's come from. And boy, oh boy, you guys are in for, like you are every single day and for a real treat because every single woman that comes here has her own individual story and her own series of things that she has gone through, challenges, and then huge triumphs to get to where they are today. And today I want to welcome her to the She Myth Eliminator story. I want to thank her for her time and being so open and gracious of sharing her experience and your background and your story. So before we kick off, Lucia, tell us a little bit about you, where you come from and how you've come to be what you and what you're doing today. Hello, everyone. It's a true pleasure and honor for me to be here with you all and sending my love to everyone. <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in Slovakia, which was a part of Czechoslovakia. Well, better known as the Czechoslovakia, so Slovakia part. And um, being raised in the country that thought more of men than a woman, Woman, woman was there to raise the kid and take care of the house, take care of the family. It was the woman's uh, job to make sure the family stays together and the kids are raised well and the house is clean. So coming and trying to actually become something else or get a better job, uh, some jobs you could not even get, like I was trying to be a police officer. <laughs> Of course, you couldn't get this job because that's a man's job. It was very hard to actually to follow your dreams and be what you want. Uh, with me on the top of everything, I am intuitive. So being raised in a communist, thing, communist uh, part of country where religion is not really open to what I felt and what I knew and what I was feeling and having experiences. It was very hard to actually become something and I was suicidal for a very long time. Then being intuitive on the top of that, I married to a narcissist man. <laughs> so even coming, uh, the greatest opportunity I think that uh, opened for me was when I was able to receive a green card, which is a visa, work visa and stay visa in the United States. And we, as a family, moved here at that time. My husband, now ex-husband, and my son, we moved to United States. Um, it was great opportunity, but it came in a great price too. Because having this huh, amazing luck to be a blonde, which in United States, being blonde, you are a joke. <laughs> Uh, being immigrant, uh, that everybody, most of people and most of employees and uh, employers um, would immediately think you are not smart enough because you are immigrant. Um, and being a woman, uh, it, it was very hard for me to get a better job or get a better position in the job. Um, studying in a school but not knowing English language very well. So I would study and translate first into Slovak language, then learn whatever I need to learn and translate back to English language. Uh, not be able to ask the proper question to the professors. It was looked at me again, I am the blonde immigrant woman. Um, the situation that I was like buying a lemon car at the dealership 
uh, and the dealer told me right away, if you don't like it, call the attorney. Well, I was working for a law firm, so that was not a problem for me. I called the attorney uh, immediately. Um, that changed. Uh, we actually, the agent would wait for me in a dress shirt outside in the winter because he was afraid I will file a lawsuit. Um, at work, um, usually they treated me first as, as a dummy because I was the immigrant. So I had to prove myself um, much more than I would have to prove myself if I would be just an American or a man. Um, at that time, I, I used to work for a facility maintenance company, which is a man world. And the funny thing was, for example, when I, in my signature, and many times when men responded from the company, it would respond, hi, Simon. My, at that time, my married name was Lucia Simon. So it was interesting in, for me that all they saw is Simon, not the Lucia part. So they responded, hi, Simon, thinking I am a man. Um, many times I just laugh them to think that I am a man. <laughs> I just told my boss, don't put my picture up there. I don't want them to know that I'm blonde. <laughs> it was just easier to, to deal with this. Um, but it was very hard being married to narcissists, which you know that the way the narcissist work will take down any self-confidence you have. Working in the company at that time, that was m mostly men. Um, I had to just keep reminding myself, um, trying to keep my self-confidence in little bit level <laughs> above the water. Uh, the good thing for me was that um, my intuition. When I moved to the United States, I started studying. I came across the book from Louis Hay, uh, You Can Heal Your Life or Heal Your Life, that I finally understood that I am not the only one who has the experience with the you know, other world and the knowledge and everything else. So that gave me a confidence to keep studying that. And I would study that a lot and everything what I do, um, my way of growing the confidence is actually study the topic or study the work or learn anything and everything I can. And then use my intuition, use my skills and work to actually in conversation how I approach the people. Um, because when I was confident, the confidence, you can feel the confidence from me. So they approached me different. Mm -hmm. um, and again, working on the myth that you can do something. Uh, the biggest pleasure is to prove, <laughs> prove them wrong mm -hmm. and to actually being, being open to possibilities and kind of being open to change, which for me change, even though I made all these huge changes in my life, change was well, always hard for me. Um, but I keep telling myself, keep understanding that change is needed for me to open the door somewhere else. And observation. Observe your situation. Observe where it will be leading you. Because sometimes, sometimes we think we want something. But when we get there, we realize we don't really want this. <laughs> it's not what it's... We have this picture in our heads thinking it's going to be this way. But sometimes when you actually get to that point, you realize you don't really want want this it's not what you really want so being able to stay humble stay grounded and stay open to the possibility grieving what you thought it was supposed to be but it's not what it was it's okay to grieve that that want it's okay to grieve 
that a moment that you want something for such, such a long time and suddenly you don't want because we are changing too. So whatever mm-hmm. you want um when you want when you were a child, of course with age and with experience, it's not necessary what it is. So being open to change, follow the path somewhere else, and also being open to release it in a way uh, that, for example, if you um, if you wanted to be ballerina when you were a child or be some kind of dancer, try to get a dancing classes just to make sure that you know the feeling, but it's okay to release this feeling when you learn some dance and now you are dancing and you know that feeling, but you know, okay, I'm done with that now. <laughs> it, yeah. It's been something in the past. It's okay to release it and move on on something else that you don't even think you would like. Maybe you would be great in a painting that will bring you bigger joy for you to paint than to be a dancer or ballerina, but that one to be something is sitting in your life. So once you release it, you will go. And the judgment, it's okay to be humble. It's absolutely okay to be humble. And trust me, I had my cries. (laughs) I cried a lot. But to knowing um, that there is another opportunity in something else and like they said, you cannot judge fish by not climbing the tree. But in a way that if you want something and it's something's not going the way that you would like it, maybe it's a way of for universe to telling you this is not enough for you. Maybe there is something much bigger waiting for you that, but you are keep pulling the opposite way because you think that that, that's the way you need to go. But the other way, it probably will bring you more joy. So don't judge. The judgment, and I know for myself, feeling insecure, feeling judged, judging myself for not being where I want. It, It comes, it's actually natural, and it comes every day. Every day I think, ooh, I should have done this better. Ooh, and then after I do something, I would come back and like, oh, I should have said this, not this. You know, the constant judgment and the constant trying to be everything perfect. I think that's what we want, but it's natural not to not to do it. So not to be a perfect. Just do it. Because sometimes Having something to try to be perfect is blocking us for moving on on some other step that it's much more needed. How many yes. times? I'm, I'm sure you did you did uh, something and you were working on that for years and or for a year and then it's done and suddenly you feel oh I spent too much time on something that it's needed, but it's not as needed as the other thing that I was postponing to do because I was still working on this one. And we never know. We never know. I just want to touch on that point this year because I think you make a few good points here. And and there's a few actually that I want to go back to. Um, So in terms of that, often as we are, you know, we're working on one particular thing and then we, you know, we finish it and we think, oh, okay, well, I'm going to move on to something else. And we would look at back at something and say, well, that was a waste of my time without actually realising that that experience that you just had, even though you haven't necessarily followed that right the way through to fruition, that it has actually now led you to the new path. It's like every, every you know, our journey is faced with many, many crossroads. And there are times where we meet these crossroads and we have to make a decision, you know, which direction will I go, go down? And had you not taken the original path, it would never, ever have led you to the crossroad that you're now facing that gives you that, like you were saying, opens up a new opportunity. I've got a few questions. I want to go back to, um, firstly, 
I want to say congratulations to you because um, who has the egg on their face now? It's not you. It's those who underestimated um, your capabilities and what you were actually, you know, able to do because, you know, for somebody coming from another country, moving somewhere brand new, not knowing the language and actually being able to take the, your learnings, translate it back into your own language, then to try and translate it back and actually learn that, um, take my hat off to you because I don't know another language. So, um, you know, congratulations on that. The second is in terms of confidence. So, I think one of the things that you realized that was going to help you to move forward was that you had to continually work on building up your own confidence because in the world that you were in, as you've described, is like the conf your confidence, as you would build it up, it would be knocked down from external, you know, external forces. And so therefore, you had to continue to just keep building yourself up. And the fundamental thing that I'm, that I'm hearing that you did with that was that you became very, very competent at things. So you, you, the process that you went through to help you learn, you know, and, and build up your confidence was, well, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to learn it inside and out so that I know it the best I possibly can. I will be the best in, you know, in my class for that particular or my industry for that particular thing. That then, that competence then helped you to build your confidence and that enabled you to, to move forward. The other thing that I wanted to um, that I wanted to make a point about is you said something about observing, and I want to know more about this because often in our in our busy lives we get so busy that we don't always take the time to just stop, to settle, to get grounded and balanced, and to maybe to hear, you know, really listen and hear what's going on not necessarily on the outside, but on the inner, and then also observing, so being very observant with what's going on. So tell us, and I think this really lends itself to sort of your intuitive side, but everybody has that, right? Everybody has those senses that we can use um, to, to our best advantage. Can you share any thoughts on that? Absolutely. When I get overwhelmed, because life is overwhelming. When I feel the stress building up, I always quiet myself down. I take time to turn everything off, to just sit with myself. Um, I like hiking. So if, if I do, I will go out and hike in a forest. The trees, <laughs> trees are my family and the birds. And just observing the every little thing in your life. Um, I have a tendency to take pictures. I like photography. And I have a hashtag, I see beauty everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to just even take a picture of, like I took a big picture of my bird feeder yesterday. And it was just beautiful. We had a snow here. So find just the little things like, Follow the butterfly, calm yourself down a little bit with nature and just try to be quiet. Meditate if you can, uh, just to quiet, close your eyes and be with yourself in that quietness because that's when the universe is talking to you. Yeah. That's when you got the inspiration. That's when... Um, you come back to yourself, coming back to yourself. And just being in the mode first of, of observer, because we are, have a tendency to respond immediately. Especially here, like in the United States, oh my, I couldn't live in New York City because it's like boom, 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 boom. You don't have a time to even take a breath and people already respond. Before you respond, even to yourself, even to self-judgment, just take a minute to just slide yourself down and actually try to observe the situation from point of view as the second person, like watch yourself. Mm -hmm. Because we, from our wounds or our pain, we have a tendency to respond very quickly and then realize we might not see the whole picture. Um, 
and it's when you quiet yourself down again it, it's like the open up it's almost like um imagine you walk into the huge warehouse and you have a flashlight and you take the flashlight and you point on certain spots so you see in this huge warehouse only what the flashlight is pointing mm -hmm. and that's our point of view our, our observation usually in life now imagine to turn the main light off and suddenly you see everything what in this warehouse is it might give you a completely different point of view that point of view of the flashlight and now you see everything and that's what happened when you take a minute just take a breath and just close your eye and just be with yourself and actually observe before you respond. Mm, that's that's what they said that, that you shouldn't reply to angry email <laughs> the same day. You should wait till morning. Yeah. That, that's I mean, those something are great like pieces, that. Great piece of, pieces of advice. And, you know, as far as um, that story and, and how you've come to be, you know, where you are now and the things that you've gone through and the things that you've shared today to help other women overcome any challenge that they're in. And what's been really interesting is all of the, there is definitely a pattern and a theme. And I mentioned this yesterday on the show and I'm seeing that with every single conversation that I have is there is a pattern of the way, the way through the pain, the way through any challenge that you have. Um, so I want people to go back and just listen and uh, to every story and they too will pick up that pattern. I'm not what I want to share it because I want you to see it for yourself that yeah. uh, if you listen and you hear and you watch these women, you will too see that there is a pattern and that there are specific things that they did to help move themselves through whatever situa situation they were going through. So I want to say thank you so much for sharing your story today. Before we, um, before we dial out on this, um, this session, I want to know, is there a piece of advice that you would like to give other women? Or a message? Just understand that this has been going on for centuries. Uh, when um, it's being now scientifically proved that the women centuries ago were basically the leaders, were in charge. And then we were... Um, made into something less than man and man took over. So this is actually going centuries in our DNA. Uh, this is our memories, uh, pain from being that way. But just understand that that was past and now we are coming again to opening to our uh, to our powers and we are supported and we support each other and times are changing very, very fast. So before you judge yourself, before you think you are less than, before you think you cannot do something, before you think that you cannot reach your dreams, know that you are loved, you are supported. And universe have your back, has your back. So good luck with everything. Know you are loved. Thank you, Lucia. That is a beautiful message to end uh, today's session. And I want to thank you very much for being here today, being open with sharing your story and just, you know, sending those messages uh, out to other women. So thank you very much for your time. Everybody else, those of you that are watching, you guys know what's going to happen tomorrow. I will be back again with another She Myth Eliminator story from another amazing woman. And if you would like to get your hands on a copy of the She Myth uh, book, then there's a couple of places you can go right beneath me, Amazon.com in the States and also Amazon.com.au if you are in Australia. And uh, you can get the paperback, hardback and also a ebook version if you would like one. So that's where you go to get it. So like I said, I'll be back again tomorrow with another amazing story from another amazing woman telling her She Myth Eliminator story. So see you guys then. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lucia. Bye.